adding standard plates. For example, we will add standard plates to create a volume in which to position a hot runner system. A new plate is previewed above the reference plate with the exact same parameters. At this stage, the parameters may be modified. Here we modify the width of the plate and then position it to one side. This is a riser plate. The new plate is created and the current plates are adjusted accordingly. The dialog is modal and stays active, with the new plate designated as the new reference plate. Since it's a riser, this is what we want. Note that the move plates checkbox has been unchecked by default because the plates have already been moved. All we have to do is give it the opposite position and create. Again, the system returns to the dialog and offers the last plate as a reference. In this case, we want to create an insulation plate below the clamping plate. So we designate the clamping plate as the reference. By default, the new plate is positioned above the reference plate. We change the connected face to be the bottom face. Next, we modify the width and the plate thickness and create it. We cancel the dialog to finish the process. The system then checks the plate modifications. And if components have to be modified as a result, it starts a new process, which can also be manually activated, called Recalculate Components. This menu displays the effective components and tries to fix them according to the new plate assembly. It opens a dialog with a browse feature, which we use to check and possibly modify the solution which the system offers. Here we can see that the screws have been lengthened to take into account the new riser plates which have been created. Once we are satisfied with the solution, the system will recalculate the components. The result shows the new screws, the modified locating ring, and the new holes for the leader pins.